Judgment in the matter of Goldman Sachs International versus Novo Banco SA. Lord Sumption will explain the decision of the court. This is the story of a bank crash. Banco Espirito Santo was one of the largest commercial banks in Portugal. On the 30th of July 2014, it reported losses for the first half of 2014 exceeding $3.5 billion. On the following day, it applied to the Portuguese Central Bank for emergency liquidity assistance. A preliminary investigation into its affairs revealed that the bank had a deficiency so large that it was not capable of continuing as a going concern. The financial crisis of 2007 and 2008 had shown that some European countries did not have a proper legal framework for rescuing failing banks and credit institutions in situations like these and preventing them from dragging down other financial institutions with them. As a result, earlier in 2014, the European Union had intervened with the European Bank Recovery and Resolution Directive. This required member states of the EU to nominate a national resolution authority, usually the central bank, and to confer on it power to reconstruct the businesses of failing credit institutions and investment firms. One of the methods of reconstruction with which member states were required to arm themselves was called the Bridge Institution Tool. This enabled national resolution authorities to transfer the sound assets and liabilities of a failing bank to a so-called bridge institution or good bank, leaving the problematical assets and liabilities behind in the old bank. On the 3rd of August 2014, the Portuguese Central Bank decided to create a bridge institution for Banco Espiritu Santo. It incorporated a company called Novo Banco, and it transferred to that company specified assets and liabilities of Banco Espiritu Santo. In June 2014, less than a month before it collapsed, Banco Espiritu Santo had borrowed $835 million from a Luxembourg company called Oak Finance Luxembourg SA. The loan agreement was governed by English law and it provided for the English courts to have jurisdiction to decide disputes. The loan had been arranged by Goldman Sachs International. The Oak loan was originally one of the liabilities transferred on the 3rd of August 2014 to the bridge institution Novo Banco by order of the central bank. But five months later, in December 2014, the Portuguese central bank decided that the Oak loan had not been eligible for transfer to Novo Banco. This was because the relevant Portuguese law giving effect to the EU directive provided that loans to significant shareholders, defined as entities owning more than 2% of a failing bank, were not eligible for transfer to a bridge institution. They had to stay behind in the bad bank, with the result uh, that they would probably not be repaid at any rate in full. The central bank decided that Goldman Sachs was a significant shareholder in Banco Espiritu Santo uh, and that it was the real lender behind Oak Finance. As a result, on the 22nd of December 2014, it issued a decision to the effect that the Oak loan was to be treated as never having been transferred to Novo Banco back in August. Goldman Sachs protested against this measure. They denied that they were either the true lender or a significant shareholder in Banco de Espirito Santo. They refused to recognize the validity of the December decision, but the central bank declined to change its mind. As a result, Goldman Sachs took steps to recover the loan from Novo Banco. They sued the central bank in the administrative courts of Portugal claiming that the December decision was void. They then arranged for Oak to assign its loan to themselves and to the guardians of a New Zealand pension fund. The two assignees then stepped into the shoes of Oak Finance, and in February 2015, they sued Novo Banco in the High Court in England for the outstanding amount of the loan. Their case was that the loan agreement had contained a jurisdiction clause conferring jurisdiction on the English High Court. They said that when in August 2014 the central bank had transferred the loan to Novo Banco, Novo Banco became party to the loan agreement, including the jurisdiction clause.
they said that that conferred on the English court jurisdiction to decide whether the December decision cancelling the transfer was valid or not. Novo Banco disputed that and applied to set aside the proceedings in England for want of jurisdiction. They argued that the effect of the December decision was to cancel retrospectively the transfer of the loan back in August so that the jurisdiction clause was to be treated as never having been binding. The commercial judge, Mr Justice Hamblin, agreed with Goldman Sachs and held that the English court had jurisdiction. Novo Banco appealed to the Court of Appeal and the Central Bank of Portugal intervened to defend its decisions. The Court of Appeal allowed their appeal. The Supreme Court unanimously agrees with the Court of Appeal for reasons given in a judgment which I have prepared. Uh, the critical question is, what was the legal effect of the December decision in Portuguese law? Mr Justice Hamblin heard evidence from experts in Portuguese law, and the essential points are now largely agreed. In Portuguese law, the two decisions of the Central Bank in August and December 2014 were both valid administrative acts which had the force of law in Portugal, unless and until a Portuguese administrative court set them aside. It is agreed that the effect of the December decision was retrospectively to treat the transfer of the loan in August as never having happened. Goldman Sachs submit that the English courts should give effect to the August decision transferring the loan to Novo Banco, but not to the December decision retrospectively cancelling that transfer. At common law, Goldman Sachs would have been right. Half a century ago, in a pair of decisions arising out of the reconstruction of a failing bank in Greece, the House of Lords had ruled that where a loan agreement was governed by English law, its transfer to a new institution under Greek law would be recognised, but a later attempt to undo that under Greek law would not be recognised. But that was then. Since 2001, EU law has provided for the reconstruction of failing banks to be dealt with in a single process under the law of the bank's home member state, and for the legal consequences to be recognised in all other member states, regardless of any other relevant law. This applied to, among other things, reconstructions using the new bridge institution tool created by the Directive of 2014. All of these rules have been transposed into English law by appropriate statutory instruments under the European Communities Act. Their effect is that the English courts recognise the whole process of reconstructing a failing bank under the law of its home state, in this case Portugal. Since it is agreed that the December decisions of the Portuguese Central Bank is legally valid in Portugal unless and until it is set aside by a Portuguese court, then unless and until that happens, it is to be recognised here. In the modern financial world, if systemic bank failures are to be avoided, it is important that there should be a single authority charged with the reconstruction of failing banks, whose decisions are recognised internationally in other countries such as the UK, where the bank may have branches or under whose law it may have entered into contracts. It is neither desirable nor possible for the English courts to take a different view about the effect of a Portuguese administrative act, which differs from the view that the Portuguese courts take about it. The appeal of Goldman Sachs and the New Zealand Pension Fund will accordingly be dismissed. Thank you. The court will now adjourn.